Hi everyone, how are you all? I'm sure you all are good. And today we're going to complete this chapter and we are just left with two topics. One is literacy and second one is population policy in India. All right. And look, it's the fourth class, you know, for this particular chapter. And remember that we're going to take at least uh, four to five days, uh, you know, to complete, you know, any chapter. And uh, it's important to do that because it doesn't make any sense if we complete any chapter within two days, right? It's a 12 standard. So we got to give at least, at least four to five days to each chapter, you know, in order to reach its completion. All right. So we're going to do two topics, right? Today and uh, with that, we, we are going to finish this chapter. Okay. So now I will share the PPT with all of you. Okay. So yesterday we studied three topics, size and growth of India's population, age structure of India's population, and then eventually declining sex ratio in India, right? And today we're going to do the fourth and the fifth topic that is going to bring end to our chapter, all right? So we, uh, we studied all these topics. So we're going to start with the number four topic that is related to literacy. All right. Okay. So it's a small topic, but there is a lot of things you know, that we need to discuss here in this literacy. Now look at my cursor. Literacy as a prerequisite to education is an instrument of empowerment. Look, here, the word prerequisite means something which is very necessary, right? Look, literacy is very necessary to education, all right? You got to remember this. And prerequisite means something which is very necessary, right? And there is a lot of difference between being literate and being educated. When someone is literate, then it means that that particular person has the ability to read and write. That's it. But when a person is educated, then it means that the education that a particular person has collected or acquired over the years, he's actually using that particular knowledge, his wisdom, his knowledge into his life. So when a person practically uses his knowledge, his wisdom in life, that is what, you know, being educated is all about. So there is a lot of difference between being literate and being educated. But we need to be literate in order to gain now, in order to gain knowledge, in order to acquire wisdom, right? Because uh, when we are literate, we have the ability to read and write. And when we read and write, and we read more and more material, or we, you know, try to understand more and more material, we eventually become educated literate, right? But it's uh, written here that literacy is a prerequisite to education. Means literacy is very important or necessary thing to education. And literacy is kind of an instrument of empowerment. Look, now what is empowerment? Empowerment means uh, when a person, you know, recognizes his potentials, when a person recognizes his abilities and that recognition of abilities and potentials that we have or that you have, it leads to the overall development, right? It leads to the overall development of an individual. So it's very important to be literate, right? It's extremely important to be literate because it leads us to empowerment, right? So that's what it, uh, you know, tries to make us understand. Then, uh, then literacy is very important. You know, it's extremely important. The more literate the pop, the more literate the population, the greater the consciousness of career options as well as 
participation, the knowledge economy. Look, when a person is literate, when a person is educated, he's always going to contribute in the nation's development. He's always going to contribute in the development of a society, right? So it's very important that our more and more population gets literacy and more and more population become educated, right? So that's why literacy is very important. And since I've already told you that, uh, you know, uh, education plays extremely important role in controlling birth rate because people become more and more, you know, aware of uh, having advantages of having smaller families. So when a person is educated, he's always conscious. He's, he, he always thinks in a scientific way. He always thinks in a logical way. He's always rational in understanding the problems of the society. If an educated person, you know, uh, what happens? An educated person always thinks like what is good for our society, what is not good for our society. So he always tries to behave or always tries to, you know, do his activity in such a manner that it always gives a lot of contribution to the nation's development, right? So literacy is very important. And uh, this part which I am teaching you, it generally is asked in the exams, right? Okay, so number third point. Further, literacy can lead to health awareness and fuller participation in the cultural and economic well-being of the country. Look, when a person is literate, he's always going to have, you know, consciousness about, about you know, being healthy, about uh, being, you know, uh, knowing about the culture, about, uh, about you know, preserving culture, about, uh, you know, uh, conserving culture. So, uh, an, an, an literate person is someone who is always beneficial for the development of a society, right? And uh, what happened over the last years is that liter lit literacy levels have improved considerably after independence and almost two thirds of our population is now literate. But improvements in the literacy rate have to struggle to keep with the rate of, rate of growth of the Indian population, which is still quite high. Look, uh, our literacy level, the literacy level of the country has improved a lot over the years, especially after independence. and uh, Two thirds of our population is now literate, so only one part is left that is not literate. But we have witnessed a lot of you know uh, improvement in uh, literacy rate, right? And uh, uh, since it is written that improvements are there, but uh, we are still facing level of struggle, you know, in keeping the case, in keeping the pace with the increasing population. Look what happens when we have got such you know great amount of population in our country, then. We don't, you know, able to provide education to everyone because we may lack, you know, in educational institutions or population is so much that we are still not able to provide education to everyone. Although there are certain laws, there are certain legislations that are passed by parliament to support, you know, primary education where it is uh, mentioned that in certain laws, it is mentioned that primary education is mandatory for everyone, education up to uh, you know, 14 years of age is mandatory. So government has uh, tried to, you know, raise the literacy level of our population. And uh, it is written that in the fourth point that enormous effort is needed to ensure the literacy of the new generations, which are not just beginning to be smaller, which are only just beginning to be smaller in numbers than in the past. So there has been an uh, improvement that we all are witnessing or experiencing in our society or in our country right okay so so what we what we read in the in this slide we read the very important line in the form of literacy is a prerequisite to education is an instrument of empowerment so what happens is that in your exams in 12 board exams they can you know pick up any line and then ask you to discuss about it. So that, that's the reason I always try to discuss as much as, as I can with you, because look at that, look at these questions, you know, look at this particular question that I've attached to this particular slide, you know, to tell you that they can, you know, uh, pick up any line and ask you uh, to discuss about that particular line. So the question is literacy as a prerequisite to education is an instrument of empowerment, discuss. So if we, if, if we will do this, uh, you know, a lot of discussions over these things, then only we'll be able to answer, you know, freely and easily in exams. So they are going to explain, you know, why it is important, why it is a prerequisite means, why it is necessary. 
while literacy is necessary step to be done to gain education eventually and we all know that it is an empowerment it is an instrument of empowerment literacy is an instrument of empowerment because it leads a human being to overall development right so uh, literacy as look at look at my cursor literacy as an instrument of empowerment we all know that it is an instrument of empowerment. You can also add that literacy or education leads to the overall development of an individual. Uh, an individual starts, you know, understanding his abilities, his potentials, and and always grow, you know, to the fullest extent to which a particular person can grow. And more literate the population, the greater the consciousness of career options as well as the participation in the knowledge economy. Okay, so when a particular person is literate and when a particular person has acquired a certain education, he is always conscious, he is always, you know, uh, having a thinking in his mind about uh, the career options that a particular person has to choose. So he is always, you know, ready to, you know, bring change in the society. He is always ready to, uh, you know, uh, contribute as much as a particular person can do for his society, for his country, right? It can lead to health awareness and fuller participation in the cultural and economic well-being of the community. Look, when a person is literate, when a person has got the education behind, he always remains, uh, you know, aware about certain aspects in his life. He always try to maintain a healthy life. He always try to, you know, preserve his culture. He always uh, knows what is happening in the culture and what is not happening in his society or in his surroundings. So he is always aware. He is always aware about the, you know things that are happening in a society and he's always uh, you know contributes to the economic well-being of the co uh, community because when a person will get education he's definitely going to get some kind of you know employment in his life and ultimately he's going to you know contribute in the economic aspect or economic well of welfare of the community as well and literacy varies considerably across gender we'll discuss this after this particular slide now i, I want to give you a you know short hint what does it means when it is written that literacy varies considerably across gender, then it means that the education or the literacy rate in male are higher than in female. So this is what this particular line means, right? And uh, it is still very low in social groups. What do you mean by social groups? Scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, SCSTs, you know, they all come under different social groups. So this is what this particular line refers to, different social groups, SCST or any kind of caste, you know, any kind of class. That's what social group is all about. So it varies not only in terms of gender, educational literacy varies in terms of social groups as well, right? Inequalities in literacy tend to reproduce inequality across generations. Obviously, when there is, a, when there is uh, you know, different levels of education, in the generations then it is always going to lead to equality um, equality between two generations we can say that our previous generation was not as much as much as educated as our present generation is so there is an inequality between two generations right so regional variations are still very wide when i say regional variations then we always talk about different states like southern states kerala has a very good you know literacy rate but states like uh, up bihar mp they don't have you know good literacy rate that's what you know this uh, line means so i'm sure you've got good amount of idea that what uh, this particular answer means you know okay so now we'll proceed to understand the uh, the, the next you know paragraph the next uh, i would say important part of this literacy right now look at that literacy varies considerably across gender across regions and across social groups i have already told you that when i say gender then it means that male and female okay so literacy varies in gender male have higher literacy rate female uh, you know they don't have higher literacy rate but the the records or the data is improving day by day you know nowadays female are also getting a lot of education they are also becoming literate right and when i say regions then you know we talk about different states southern states have good literacy rate as compared to the states of uh, central india or northern states right and when i say social groups then we talk about scs sts all right so the literacy rate for women is almost 22 percent less than the literacy rate for men okay so 22% less literacy rate in, in, in women as compared to men. However, female literacy 
has been rising faster than male literacy. So it's a very good thing that literacy rate of female, you know, is increasing with a very good pace and uh, the pace is even more than the literacy rate of men. All right. However, uh, okay, uh, because it, uh, so, so it is increasing in a very good pace for, for female because it started from relatively low levels. Thus, female literacy rose by almost 15% 50, between 90, uh, 1991 and 2001 compared to the rise in male literacy rate for a little less than 12%. So between the period of 1991 and 2001, the literacy rate of female were more. Okay, It was almost too close to 15%, but the literacy rate of uh, men was somewhere around 12%. Uh, so this is how literacy varies in, you know, gender. Now we're going to talk about social groups, you know, literacy related to social groups. Literacy rates also vary by social groups. Historically, disadvantaged communities like SC and STs have lower rates of literacy and rates of female literacy within these regions groups are even lower. So earlier, you know, in our, early, in our early societies, there was a lot of disc discrimination that used to be there in, in our society. People were de deprived of getting education, especially lower caste, uh, you know, group of people. But now the situation is uh, becoming very good. Everyone is getting a lot of knowledge. So now there is no such discrimination, which, you know, goes on in our society. Okay, so regional variations are still wide with states like Kerala approaching universal literacy. So Kerala is approaching lit universal literacy. When I say li universal literacy, then it means that almost everyone in Ka everyone in, in the state of Kerala is literate. Everyone in the Kerala is able to read and write, right? This is what literacy means. And obviously if someone is able to read and write, he can, you know, then get a lot of education because once we start understanding and able to read and write the things, then only we start get, getting more and more knowledge. So, you know, it's almost close to 99.9 percent. .9%, almost everyone in Kerala, whether he belongs to uh, any you know caste, whether he belongs to any caste, whether he is a worker, whether he is you know uh, a normal person, whether he belongs to village, whether he belongs to city, everyone in Kerala has a very you know good control over their you know literacy okay but uh, states like Bihar are lagging behind the inequalities in the literacy rate are especially important because they tend to reproduce inequality across generations so I've already told you that when uh, two generations don't have you know equal access to education when two generations don't have you know equal potential as far as literacy is concerned then there's always going to you know have uh, you know inequalities uh, between two generations all right and illiterate parents are at a severe disadvantage in assuring that their children are well educated and thus perpetuating existing inequalities. Look, you know, it's very important, you know, uh, it's very important that parents should also be educated. Parents should also be, you know, literate because if parents are well educated, they're always going to give better direction to their kids. They're always going to give, you know, uh, a, a good path, you know, to lead eventually in their lives. So I'm sure you have understood uh, these two important paragraphs that that were very important as far as literacy rate is concerned. All right. So the question that comes out of this particular paragraph is that obviously we understood three different categories of gender, social group and regions that how, you know, our literacy varies in gender, how our literacy varies in uh, social group and how our literacy varies in regions. I don't think I need to explain this paragraph because I've already discussed a lot about these three categories. So we have ended our first topic in the form of literacy. Now we'll proceed to understand the, proceed to understand the different uh, or the second topic for today, today's class. So the second uh, topic, which is the last topic of this particular uh, chapter is population policy of India, right? So this is the last topic, right? So what happened in 1952, the government came with a policy. The government came with a population policy in India. 
and the policy was given the name national family planning program so what was the name of the policy or what was the name of the population policy that was introduced in 1952 the name of the policy was national family planning program and it was introduced in 1952 right and this policy tried to influence the rate and pattern of population in socially desirable direction you know this policy tried to control the birth rate try to control the control or reduce the birth rate because since we all know that we are you know we are among those countries that are facing overpopulation problem we have got a lot of population so it's important to reduce the birth rate it's important to you know uh, to to curtail or to reduce the the birth rate as much as we can because if we will able to control or reduce the birth rate then only we will able to uh, reduce the growth rate or reduce the overpopulation problem in our country all right okay so the objectives of this pop this population policy were people should be controlled and awareness should be spread in a way which is socially desirable you know when i say social socially desirable direction or when i say social desirable that means that it means that the population should be controlled birth rate should be controlled and you know there should be a replacement level in the society when i say replacement level then it means that parents are replaced by two children and it will happen only when parents give birth to only two children or somewhere around three children then only we will say that replacement level is there right so it's very important to you know maintain the replacement level in which parents are replaced by two children right okay so population should be controlled and awareness should be spread in a way which is socially desirable this was the first objective of this policy the second objective was obviously was related to this particular point only control the birth reduce birth rate through birth control methods right so this policy was aiming to you know adopt certain birth control methods to actually control or eventually control birth rate all right okay so but what happened this policy was introduced in 1952 but remember that there was an emergency period that was going on you know in years 1975 and in 1976 basically emergency period was uh, was around 18 months in which they come a great you know setback for this population policy now what happened during the emergency time uh, in 1975 and 1976 at that particular time indira gandhi was prime minister of india so congress was there you know uh, was there uh, controlling the country it was there that was holding the power right so during emergency indira gandhi was there i have already told you all the fundamental rights are taken away press was censored anybody could be put in jail without a trial mass sterilization program was introduced by sanjay gandhi who was the younger son of the then prime minister indira gandhi to control population right so what was happening during emergency is that people were forcefully pushed people were forcefully pushed to go for mass sterilization now you need to understand what is sterilization sterilization simply means permanent birth control right and permanent birth control is what sterilization is all about and sterilization method can be done in male can be done in female right so mass sterilization was going on right so mass sterilization was going on i'm just left with 10 minutes you know i have to complete this particular topic in less than 10 minutes because i've got the indication that uh, remaining meeting time is 9 minutes and 45 seconds okay so mass sterilization program was going on where everyone was pushed majority of the population was you know pushed to go for mass sterilization to have a permanent birth control right so this is what happening people were forcefully you know pushed into the camps to to you know adopt this mass sterilization method but people were some people were not ready to go for you know sterilization but government was not listening to anyone uh, press was censored there was no press 
uh, that could cover the you know news related to this mass sterilization and government censored means stop the functioning of press everyone was you know uh, put in the jail without any trial because people were sometimes you know creating resistance to this policy but uh, but government was you know uh, forcefully doing everything right and look at that look at my cursor in this tubic tommy was performed for women and vesic tommy was performed for men right okay so this was what was happening okay i have to make sure that it is the right you know term okay so vesic tommy vesic tommy was the medical procedure that was you know being done by the doctors for men for controlling birth uh, in terms of men and for women tubic tommy was the process that was being performed by doctors for women right so these were the two medical procedures that were being done by the doctors in order to control the sterilization in order to you know uh, have permanent birth control for men or for women so this was what that was going on so after that what happened uh, after that what happened was during emergency uh, government was doing all these things but after national emergency government was replaced by another government then janta party came after congress party janta party came and at that particular time morarji desai was prime minister of india and that 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 government did what that government changed the name of this policy because this policy uh, was you know not considered good as as far as uh, you know local people are concerned they were assisting this policy they were assisting the activities or forceful activities that uh, you know congress government was doing so what happened this particular government the uh, the after government of uh, you know uh, after government uh, the government after emergency it changed the name of the policy so national family planning program was named as national family welfare program so the name was replaced so remember that you got to remember that uh, what was the name of the policy earlier on and how the you know the name was changed and what was the name of the the policy after the emergency the name of the policy was national family welfare program all right so what happened uh, you know look at the question evaluate the outcomes of family planning program during emergency so what happened during the emergency uh, in this family planning program Fa family planning program as a result uh, uh, as a result of the family planning program growth rate of the population decreased and people started appre appreciating small family so due to the efforts of the government due to the efforts of congress you know uh, people started you know appreciating small families so there was uh, some you know positive thing that come out of this policy was that population you know was controlled to certain extent number second point the family planning program suffered a setback during the years of national national emergency so it, it suffered a lot because forceful things were done by the government in order to uh, you know push people for the sterilization process in which vasectomy was done by doctors for male and uh, tubectomy for female right yes tubectomy for women and vasectomy for you know male so this is what uh, was happening actually massive pressure on the lower level government officials to bring people for sterilization the camps were organized for this purpose as a result there was widespread opposition to this program a new program a new government after emergency abandoned it national family pro uh, family planning program was renamed as national family welfare program so i've already told you that uh, this uh, program suffered a lot because government actually were doing forceful activities so after this when new government came after emergency so they changed the name of the this particular program this is what actually happened or you can say the outcomes of na family planning program uh, you know these were the outcomes of family planning program okay so now we're going to understand now we're going to understand the family planning program the family planning program suffered during the period of national emergency now we're gonna see the you know the reasons that why that why this family planning program suffered a lot during the period of emergency what happened reasons for the setback of the family planning program during emergency introduction of coercive 
program of mass sterilization. I've already told you that forceful activities were done by government. So what does this word mean, coercive program? This was not only a, you know, a program for control, the birth rate, but this program turned out to be coercive program. Coercive program means, you know, something that is forceful. This program was a forceful program that, you know, in which government, you know, were, government was actually adopting the forceful activities, you know, to push people for, for, for sterilization process. Vast number of mostly poor and powerless people were forcefully sterilized. So many poor people or powerless people were forced, you know, to go for sterilization. Sterilization refers to medical procedures. I've already told you that sterilization is a medical procedure in which vasectomy is done for men and tubectomy is done for women. In which, in which they reach that permanent birth control, you know, situation. And after that, they never able to give birth to the children. Right, so this was what actually was happening. There were massive pressure on lower level government officials. So uh, government was putting a lot of pressures on uh, school teachers, on, off, on, on office workers to bring more and more people in the camps. And uh, government was, uh, you know, putting a lot of pressure on everyone, to, you know, to go for mass sterilization. They were giving that duty to teachers, to the, to, the, to the certain office workers to bring more and more people in the camps so that people go for mass sterilization and eventually they can able to, you know, control that birth, uh, birth, you know, giving that process, birth giving process. So this particular pol policy faced a lot of opposition from the government. That's why after the emergency, the government was changed and the name of the policy was renamed. All right, so this is what happened, you know, in this particular policy right so this is the last slide and uh, with this slide we're going to end this chapter i'm just uh, you know i'm just remaining with two minutes so now we're going to discuss you know everything regarding uh, you know uh, the achievement that india achieved in demographic sense so look at that what is written india's demographic achievement so what india achieved after this uh, you know family uh, planning program or what india achieved after you know, this family planning program is that half a century after formulating the national policy family program, there were certain achievements that India achieved. Reduced crude birth rate. Crude birth rate is that birth rate that doesn't consider, you know, different, uh, you know, sex or male or female. That doesn't consider your, uh, what would I say? That doesn't consider different age groups. Crude birth is a, uh, you know, a natural or unaltered or unchanged birth rate. So we could able to reduce the birth rate after this, uh, uh, after this, uh, after this program, and we reduce the infant mortality rate. Now, infants were not dying as much as is, it used to be in earlier times. Then we also reduced death rate, true death rate or death rate were the same thing. And then we also achieved universal awareness of the need and people became aware, you know, after this particular program. There was a lot of awareness in the people and they started appreciating the, you know, smaller families. And we halved the total fertility rate from six to three. So total fertility rate was also, you know, uh, uh, was also brought down Earlier, uh, mother was giving birth to six children. Now, mother was giving birth to three, you know, three children. So, we achieved all these things, right? So, it is a very important slide. Do watch this slide. Okay. So, until then, take care all. I have to finish my class within this, uh, you know, time slot. So I'm sure you have understood everything. Kindly text me in the WhatsApp uh, group. You know, have you, uh, have you understood anything or not? So, I'm ending this session. Until then, take care all. I hope you will stay home and stay safe. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. It's time to say goodbye. I have to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this class.